Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel. How fast do you swing your golf clubs? Do you swing them at the same speed as PJ Tour players? I guess probably not. Most people haven't got the speed that PJ Tour players have got. Manufacturers make loads of equipment. They do. And Mizuno have got like eight, I think eight different irons in their range now. Ping have got five or six and other manufacturers have got more or less. They've all got different ranges and they're all for different types of golfers. So what I've got in my hands here, I've got the JPX923 Tour at 34 degrees. I have the uh, JPX923 Hot Metal, which was the always the gold standard when you're talking about when it comes to the range of game improvement, um, yeah, helpful launch and blah, da da. But you have the new kid on the block. The new kid on the block is the JPX923 Hot Metal HL, high launch, specifically designed for golfers that don't swing majorly quick and I don't mean 50 miles an hour or even 60 miles an hour because of their swing DNA data that they captured during their fittings etc they've seen a huge amount of data to say that there is an awful lot of golfers out there that don't swing very quick and to produce an off uh, club for them designed for them is the way forward so I'm going to do a test I'm going to go get the simulator on and I'm going to go do a number of hits. I'll do a number of hits at 75 miles an hour, which is the, the kind of the upper level that they were saying that this HL is going to be designed for um, and lower. And then I'm going to be doing a test at 90 miles an hour. And I'll do that off camera because you don't want to be seen do that. But I'm going to go get the simulator on now. We'll do a test with all of these three golf clubs at that slower speed. Then we'll look at the information and see just how much you win or lose from your different choices of golf club. Simulator is now on. I've got it on the standard foresight range. There's going to be no complicated greens and stuff like that because I don't want uh, different hitting surfaces to yeah, manipulate the data in any way. So I'm just going to have it on the standard boring range. Now I'm going to be hitting a load of shots on here. So I'll fast forward the videos. We're going to be trying to go for 75 miles an hour as best as we can do. And then we'll flick over to say something like the high launch, which is where the 75 miles an hour upper level is designed for and see if there's a win or a lose when it comes to control distance and all that lot. And then we're going to go flick over the tour. Why doing the tour? Because a lot of people turn around and say, well, it's just loft. Loft is the biggest winner when it comes to um, functionality and also carry when you reduce the speed. And you know what? They are right to a certain extent. However, when it comes to the hot metal, this is 28 and a half degrees. When it comes to the tour, that's 34 degrees. When it comes to the hot metal high launch, that's 31 degrees, but it has all the tech, all the springiness, all the wonderful loveliness, which is in a JPX. And so we get the advantage of raw faces and loft as well. So let's go hit a load of these. Let's go skip through and then we'll flick over to the HL, skip through, flick over to the tour, skip through, and then we'll go to the numbers and see just how much you win or lose from different types of golf clubs at 75 miles an hour. And then I'll do the 90 miles an hour as well. Right, let's go give this a hit a load of times. So 28 so or so shots. That's with the hot melt. Let's go and do the hot melt high launch now, then flick over to the tour and see what the differences are. Right, so another load done. Um, let's go flick over to the tour, do the same thing again, and let's go see how these three compare.
right, 90 some odd shots hit later. Oh, a bit tiring that. Eh? Even at slow speed. Right, let's go crunch numbers and see the difference between all three of these irons. And I'm already seeing some interesting differences which the slow swingers really, really do need to um, take heed of. As you saw, hit a load of shots with the JPX93 hot metal, the hot metal high launch, and also the tour. Um, obviously three different golf clubs, but they're there for a specific reason to showcase the difference between loft uh, with no tech, loft with lots of tech, and not lots of loft, but with lots of tech. There you go. And so I've done two different data sets, the one you saw at 75 miles an hour, and also the one at 90 miles an hour, so slightly underneath my, underneath my normal speed. So let's go to the information we've collected first of all when it comes to the 75 miles an hour and see what the difference is in distances and peak heights and descent angles and, uh, and stuff like that. So effectively what the high launch is there to do, and it's not just Mizuno make it again, Ping make it for example, and other manufacturers make their own versions of certain things, but they're designed for the slower swinger, for the, for the guys that swing at 75 miles an hour or even slower. Now I've done this test at 75 miles an hour, which is the upper end of what the JPX923 hot metal high launch is designed for. So if you're going to swing slower than that, and bear in mind I've lost count of how many fittings I had last year where heck, guys didn't swing their driver at 90 miles an hour, let alone their 7 iron at 75. So, right, let's go into the uh, averages for everything. So 923 hot metal first, ball speed 105 miles an hour. I won't go into the, uh, you can see the screen now, I'll just skip to the important bits. Um, going up 24 yards in the air and descending at 41 degrees at 149. So remember, we're not just talking about distance, we're talking about functional distance. So how high something goes, how much control it comes into the green with, etc., and all that. Because the last thing you really want to do is hit a golf ball into a green and it just disappears out of the back because it's going in like a ballistic missile. Um, right, now the yellow is the JPX923 hot metal high launch. I just ran out of space, so that does say HMHL, HL, but yeah. Um, so the yellow, the high launch, 103 miles now, 102.7, so slightly under when it comes to ball speed of the hot metal, but again, that's expected because it's got, um, it's weaker lofted. But it's going 26 yards in the air, two yards higher the, than the peak height of the hot metal, and it's going 43.2 degrees descent angle. So my magic number is 45 degrees. If you're gonna get a golf ball going into a green at 45 degrees, that's gonna stop on any green whatsoever. And then you've got a variation of what's acceptable after that. So anything between 40 and 45 degrees acceptable, no problem whatsoever. The problem you've got with the hot metal, the first one at 41 degrees, is that when I was hitting some shots with, um, with that, yeah, the really, really well hit ones were peaking up at the descent angles that you see as an average of the of the high launch. The problem is when I didn't quite catch it perfectly, like no, not, no one catches it perfectly every single time, the descent angles are dropping into the 30s. And when it sort of drops into the 30s, you've got no chance of stopping it whatsoever. That's going in too shallow and that's just gonna, you could hit the front of the green, disappear out the back. Um, but the high launch is going 43.2. And the good shots when I hit the really good ones, they were descending at 45 degrees. And the worst bad ones, um, they weren't getting into the 30s. They were descending at the same kind of rate that the hot metal standard one does um, on his average. So yeah, and when it's going one four four, so it's going five yards shorter than the hot metal, but again, you're looking at higher peak heights, higher descent angles, much more, much more control. And considering it's only five yards, it's not bad whatsoever. Let's go to the Tour, the bottom one, the JPX 923T for Tour. Um, ball speed's now slightly under 100 miles an hour, 99.9. .9, and we go in 24 yards in the air, like we were when it comes to the original hot metal and descending at 43.5 degrees, which is basically matches the high launch. So when it comes to loft, yes, loft is gonna be your friend all day long. And when you go to something like as aggressive as a tour when it comes to its weak lofted, you are gonna get the descent angle. But what you're finding here is that the, the surprising one, the middle one, the high launch, is getting the descent angle, the control of the tour iron, but you're getting the peak height well above the previous super game improvement side of it. So yeah. Um, the club head delivery, I won't go into too much detail. We've obviously, you can see by the graphical representation there that I've got all the club delivery data on there. And I've also got all the ball data and dispersion rings and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to dispersion rings very, very quickly, um, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to those really because 
I'm not used to swinging at 75 miles an hour. There was a few on each data set that I had to take away because, I, again, I, I don't hit them perfect every single time. And the clear miss hit ones, there's no point in putting them in there because they didn't really showcase anything whatsoever other than the fact that I'm not a robot um, and I'm not used to swinging at 75 miles an hour. And you can see strike was within reason there and then you can see slight differences. I mean, the main thing is you've got head speeds down there all within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of each other. So it's, yeah, doing exceptionally well. Right, so let's go into the 90 mile an hour. So the slightly under what my normal speed is. So we can see the differences when you start cranking speed up. So when it comes to a slow swing, definitely utilize the high launch technology that you've got in there. You've got all the help that JPX Iron's gonna give in their normal full on hot metal and then made beefier, even more, but with loft. And so we're getting the advantages of loft, advantages of a super springy face, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, let's go into 90 miles an hour. So very quickly, you've got the hot metal first, then the blue, the high launch, and then the tour at the bottom. Um, again, you can see there, the main things for me is the fact that you can see a ball speed gain, which you would do because obviously it's now we're talking about loft. We've got 38 yards in the air, 39 yards in the air, and 36 yards in the air when it comes to the tour. Um, 178, 169, 165. So the big winner here, hot metal. And so if you were looking at distance wise and just pure distance, that is it, you just concentrate on distance and you got speed, well, do you know what? A hot metal is gonna win all day long. Um, however, there is a reason, I'll go into it in a little while as to why I wouldn't go for the hot metal. Um, but anything over 75 miles an hour, all up to 90 miles an hour, you're gonna start seeing that the hot metal is gonna start really, it's gonna start overtaking the, uh, the HL probably around about, for my delivery, around about 77, 78 miles an hour, maybe 79, and then past 79 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, you're gonna win with the hot metal. So again, this is the whole idea when it comes to you getting custom fit, guys, make sure you get custom fit properly because you're losing or you're leaving on the table there distance which is effectively free control free distance because you're just not getting fit for it um so when it comes to the tour look at the tour one there you're going 165 against 169 and we're going 36 yards in the air against 39. So depending on your speed and requirements, you can see even there the hot metal high launch is still holding its own and still doing well, but then it's obviously being eclipsed then by the hot metal at that speed. So, and there's all the different um, dispersion rings and club delivery on the graphical representation there. So you can see that within reason, everything's tried to be kept as close as I possibly can do to fair to show the difference. So. To leave it on one thing, there's a reason why um, Hot Metal High Launch was designed, obviously for trying to encompass the amount of golfers which don't swing very quick, as the progression of game improvement irons, or distance irons I should like to be really called, um, as they go more aggressive, more aggressive, more aggressive, there is a need to try and look back at the slower swing speed golfer and making sure they still have a golf club design which is functional for them. When it comes to the faster speeds, there's a reason why you generally don't find fast swing speed players, decent players, or just fast swing speed players, play with game improvement irons, or distance related irons as I like to say. It's because the gapping becomes ridiculous. Now I've captured two, uh, just two shots here, both going at 44 yards peak uh, height. So basically I tried to hit a hot metal nice and high, and a tour nice and high. Now, okay, push comes to shove, I should be able to get the tour or the um, hot metal just fractionally higher because the, uh, the center of gravity in the design of the head, it just makes it much more easy to do. Um, but 44 yards and 44 yards. The difference is I was going 168 with the tour as opposed to 181 when it comes to distance with the hot metal. The problem with that is how many wedges am I gonna need? The reason why fast swing speed players do not use game improvement irons, distance related irons, is because the gapping becomes crazy. When you have gapping becomes crazy, it's very, very difficult to play golf because you've got 20 yard gaps between your golf clubs or either that, or you need about seven trillion wedges. Now, again, generally speaking, unfortunately, you're talking about um, distance related irons or game improvement irons, they're cast. When they're cast, you use only a certain amount of bend you can do with lofts, etc. And so gaps just become big. And uh, I know when it comes to the ping, the G430, They've tried to change their lofting around a little bit this year, so their pitching wedge now isn't a classic 45 degrees, it's stronger than that, and therefore they've put a 
another wedge in and that's a standard thing now when you're talking about most manufacturers they don't do that they've still they've just got bigger gaps that works great when you've got a lower swing speed player because their lower swing speed means that their gap, loft gaps become small anyway so having that bigger gap's not a problem when it comes to a faster swing speed those big gaps mean that you're going to go turn a 12 13 yard gap into an 18 yard 20 yard gap and it starts becoming a bit funny when it comes to playing golf it becomes a bit of a joke so that's the reason why we have hot metal high launch and and that's for Mizuno and other manufacturers make it as well. But that's the important. So if you're getting fit, make sure you're getting fit for the right head, depending on what your requirements are. If you are, if you are a slow swing speed player, make sure that you look into the potential of testing these high launch ideas. Now, yes, they are slightly bigger um, when it comes to generalized. They're slightly bigger than um, most of the range because obviously they're utilizing technology to help as best they can do in the initial getting of that golf ball launching. Considering you've got two shots there, one with a hot metal high launch, and uh, one with a hot metal, sorry, one with a tour, I'm only, you're losing 1.7, I think it was, degrees in launch angle, considering there's nearly six degrees of loft difference between these two. And that's the difference with CG. CG helps. And if you're getting fitted for the right CG head at the right speed, you're gonna have free gains, and that's who likes, free, everyone likes free gains, um, for your golf. And effectively, you're gonna go buy something anyway. You can also spend your money on something, so you might as well spend your money on the right thing to start with. So, hope you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up. Go on YouTube, like it, so do I. Next to it is a little uh, subscribe button, it's free. Great for the channel if you click on that. And next to it is a bell icon, that's a notification bell. And if you click that one, that will notify you next time. I upload another video, so I hope you're well, and we'll see you again soon.